Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the news. We have a fantastic episode today that is actually filled with some pretty heavy real world issues. So I'd love to get your insight. So at any point, please comment on any of the topics we talk about today. We would love to hear from you guys. and We do read all the comments. So uh, we are out in a beautiful little coulee just north of the city. This is actually the first place I ever did an episode of the news with my trusty lightning here. It has been obviously a very faithful steed ever since I started doing these series and it has never let me down once. So uh, it's beautiful out here. We have hoarfrost coloring all the trees and it is white, white, white is so pretty. So take a look at this drone footage and let's just get right into this. Ford has recently and quietly introduced a digital sales platform where you can go on, you can find a vehicle that suits your needs and you can buy it right on the website. Ford is trying to compete with the likes of Rivian and Tesla in this endeavor to make the sales process that much easier and to obviously bypass dealerships. Now, obviously this digital platform is not quite as what it seems right now. As it looks, uh, as of right now, you can only order a Mach-E. They're trying to pander to a specific crowd. Obviously, Mach-E is kind of more of the techie generation uh, that will be buying this vehicle. So on top of that, it doesn't really look like you can actually buy the vehicle. Basically, you fill in all your parameters. You have the trim, the color, the wheel type, all that stuff. You plug that in and it will find the nearest one to you at a dealership. Now, this is obviously only in the States right now, but once you go through, you can select lease terms, you could select finance terms, you could select a trade-in value, you put all of that stuff in, and then basically it says, you go to this dealership and pick up your new vehicle. Now, it doesn't seem like there's any obligation from that dealership to actually honor what Ford puts out on this website. So it is really just in a testing beta phase. And that's really interesting because Ford has recently talked about getting rid of dealerships and having an online platform where you can buy vehicles. And this is where I want your insight is the disappearance of dealerships a good thing or a bad thing? I understand a lot of dealerships do mark up vehicles because of things like greed or things like the rarity of a vehicle. If you're selling a vehicle over MSRP, it better be because there's only one or two of them out there. But if you're taking an F-150 XLT and selling it above MSRP, then there's a problem. And that is where the issue lies. I get that some dealerships do that. However, there are other dealerships that will get you a better deal than what you could get on a straight online platform. So what is it that you guys love about dealerships? What is it that you guys hate about dealerships? Is it the salespeople? Is it the time spent in a dealership? Is it the experience in general? We wanna know because we would love to figure out how we as a dealership can create the most positive atmosphere to help you make that decision. It is a big decision. Obviously, it is the second biggest decision you ever make in your life behind a house. So, what do you guys think is the biggest flaw or the biggest positive aspect about going to a dealership and buying a vehicle? Because like I said, on one end of the spectrum, yes, some dealerships will sell for over MSRP, but on the other end of the spectrum, some dealerships will give you a very good deal. So. Let us know down in the comments what you think about that. It is a very heavy topic in the auto industry these days. I just personally, I feel like there is something very dystopian about buying a car online. You have to feel it. You have to drive it. You have to understand, you know, if this is exactly what you're looking for and having hands on is arguably the most important thing when buying that. You wouldn't buy a house online. Obviously you would go and take a look at it first. So. Let us know down in the comments what you think about that. Do you think that it is a benefit to having Ford dealerships basically become delivery centers and service houses? Or would you miss haggling with a salesperson? Moving on, it seems that Ford is developing a small Skunk Works team of people to create an affordable EV platform for Ford. Now, obviously, uh, it's not very Skunk Works and not very secretive if I'm talking about it here now. I thought this was gonna be in the same vein as the GTD or the GT, where they basically built it in a janitor's closet 
in the basement of one of their factories, but that is not the case. So it looks like Ford is hiring a bunch of ex-Tesla employees to front this project. Now, as an EV platform, it basically means you can plug and play different body styles on top of it. The same way the Focus shared a platform with the Escape, this is the same concept. So you're gonna have a new EV platform with a bunch of different body styles that you can put on top of it for a bunch of different models. Now, obviously Ford is still on the EV train. They have reduced some of their investments in the larger vehicles like the Lightning. The Lightning is a great vehicle, but it is not going to be a money maker for Ford. What they're trying to do is they're trying to come up with something that will make them profitable within the first year of release. So. Could we see the return of a Focus, an EV Focus? I've always said that the Focus would be a phenomenal platform to have EV. It is small, it is economical, and it is very, very utilitarian. It's got a bunch of space and it drives really well. So let us know down in the comments what you think about that. Whereas you have people like GM saying that they're actually gonna shift their focus to hydrogen powered vehicles. Is EV still the future or are we looking at potentially going a completely different route? I want you guys to let us know what you feel about EVs. Let us know down in the comments and can't wait to see a new affordable EV from Ford. One of the biggest problems that our nation is facing these days is actually car theft. So in 2021, 86,000 cars were stolen from citizens of Canada. In 2022, that number rose to 105,000 thefts. And in 2023, that number is unfortunately trending upwards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over five of the best ways to deter or at least help police once your vehicle has been stolen. And obviously the biggest one is deter people from stealing your vehicle. But here we are, we have to go over this. So number one, the first couple are very simple. Number one is an immobilizer. So you can get a piece of tech that you throw in your vehicle that if somebody steals it, you can remotely shut the vehicle down and obviously it will be where you have shut it down. That deters people. That's not really a deterrent. That's more of a after they've stolen it, shut it down, goodbye. Uh, it works though, it does work. Uh, number two would be uh, to park in a well-lit area. I know that that sounds kind of uh, very silly, but you have to understand that if you can see somebody, if you have a camera system or if you have anything, a ring doorbell and your car is out on the street under a lamp, I, I doubt that someone would go for that over the parked car in the alleyway that is you know, shrouded in darkness. Nobody wants to go over that one. Uh, number three, tracking software. Something as easy as an Apple AirTag uh, can help find your vehicle once it has been taken. Uh, it's very simple, it's very effective, uh, You, but obviously, you know, the biggest tip here is to not hide it in plain sight. Try and hide it somewhere where, you know, nobody would obviously look for it. So it will remain in the vehicle once, uh, once it's been taken. So again, not really a deterrent, but definitely a way to help find it once it's been done. Uh, number four, a Faraday bag. So what a Faraday bag is, is a small pouch that actually stops the signal from your key uh, from getting out. So one of the craziest things recently is that there was a news uh, broadcast recently that showed a guy who slapped together a few parts from Radio Shack and was actually able to steal the code, digital code from your key and then walk over to your vehicle and steal it just using something as simple as that. A Faraday bag blocks the signal so they cannot do that. So that is an option as well. And now on to number five. This is obviously my favorite one uh, and is very, very simple. Drive a manual transmission car. There is nothing that would deter a thief more than not knowing how to drive the vehicle. And you know, there has been many reports of a lineup of cars that were taken and the one in the middle that was not taken was because it was a manual transmission because they just don't know how to drive it, which I think is hilarious. They don't make car thieves like they used to. You know, back in the day, these guys could steal a helicopter if they wanted to, but now you got, you know, Gen Z millennial thefts. They just don't know what they're doing. So drive a manual transmission car. Let me know down in the comments what your best practice is for deterring thieves. Is it something as simple as a garage? Is there something that I didn't cover here that would greatly help people? It is definitely something that we need to talk about. It's definitely something that we need to uh, bring into the limelight because at the end of the day, our federal leaders are actually meeting with insurance companies. They're meeting with these manufacturers to see what they can do. Is it is it the onus on the manufacturer? 
Is the insurance companies going to continue to help out if, you know, if your car is stolen like three times in four years, uh, are they gonna say, you know, part of your policy is now that we won't cover it because it's obviously a problem with you. So let us know down in the comments what you think about that. Let us know down in the comments if you guys have any, you know, better ways of deterring thieves and we will, uh, we will take them seriously. We will take them seriously and then hopefully we can kind of create a conversation that everyone can get involved with and, you know, get the, get the knowledge out there because I think, you know, people need to know about this stuff. So other than that, that is kind of the episode of the news. Obviously there's some serious stuff in there and, and I, I, like I said, I, I really would like your guys' feedback. I'd like to know what you guys are thinking about, you know, going away with dealerships. Uh, if EV is the future, if hydrogen power is the future, and obviously, of course, uh, this car theft thing. So let us know down in the comments. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.